If you are using Zapier automation, you are already ahead of the curve, but there are many times that you might run into a bit of a roadblock when you are looking for information so that you can do more with it. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down for you how to find data that exists already inside of your Airtable database. And we're gonna be doing this with Zapier Automation. So if learning more about how these two tools work together is of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and this is Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you unlock the full potential of no-code tools and Airtable and Zapier, those are the two tools that we started with. They are what we built our entire consulting practice on. We use them daily and we absolutely love both of these software. Now, before I get into the heart of this video, I do want to first invite you to join me for some free training. If you like what you learn here, you are going to love learning about the fundamental building blocks of Airtable. And I teach that to you in my Airtable crash course. Go ahead and sign up for free at gapconsulting.io slash Airtable dash crash dash course, and we'll send you the first email in a series of emails. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of things. I am here inside of my Airtable database, and I have some data already set up for us. I've got two different tables. And again, the focus of our video is to showcase how we can find data that we already have inside of Airtable. Now, before we get into the building and the, you know, what do all the different tables mean, before we get into all of that, I first want to point out kind of a general rule of thumb. Airtable has its own automations. This section right here allows you to build automations inside of Airtable. Now, I highly recommend to all of our clients that you start with Airtable automations. There is no cost to you to build an Airtable automation, assuming that you have room for more automation in your plan. There's very little marginal cost for you as somebody who's performing automation. If you're already an Airtable user, especially if you're already a paid user, there's no additional cost to build automation here in Airtable. But there are some limitations to Airtable's automation. Number one, you only get so many of them per database. Number two, they don't integrate with just anything out there. So if you want to connect to applications, other software that Airtable doesn't already natively connect to, and therefore you can't do in your automation, well, that's where you might go over to Zapier. Now, if you're not familiar, Zapier is what we call the glue of the internet. It allows you to connect different open API software to each other. You can pass data from one place to another. So in this video, I'm going to be assuming that you're already using Zapier or you know that you need to use Zapier for your automation build and that building this automation in Airtable will be insufficient for whatever reason. Okay, so inside of Airtable now, let's take a look back at our data. Here's what we have in my find multiple. This is the first table that we're going to be exploring. You'll see here that I've got a bunch of different records, 16 in total and nothing fancy with the naming convention. It's just one through 16 and they're split into these three phases or categories. I've named this field category, and then we have phase one, phase two, phase three, and I should point out that I use Roman numerals for some unknown reason. Okay, so what we wanna do is imagine that in our automation, maybe we want to find all of the records in a certain phase. And so for that, we're going to use the first of the searching features inside of Zapier's Airtable integration. So let's flip on into Zapier and we're going to create a first automation here. I'm going to create a new Zap just for this example, and we're going to let that load up. And now the trigger could be anything that you need in your automation. Of course, this is just an example. So we're just going to use something like a scheduler here. We'll say, hey, on a certain schedule, this automation runs. Maybe we're creating a report for management and we're saying, find everything that's in a certain phase and we're going to send that data to you in an email. Okay, so we might set up a trigger that does this every uh, day or on a certain day of the week. So we could say, yeah, run this weekly and uh, we'll configure that to run on Monday at, let's say, 8 a.m., right? So it's pretty simple. It's just a point and click here. This is one of the reasons I love Zapier. It's so, so easy for someone who's not tech savvy to put together an automation. So we can test this trigger and it's gonna say, okay, well, right now as of this recording, this is the date and time, but of course this automation in the future, if we actually were building it and turning it on, would run when we configure it to do so. Okay, now we wanna find records in Airtable. So first we have to look up the software that we're gonna use here. And I'm just doing a quick search 
for Airtable. Make that selection, and then we choose the action event. Now we can scroll down here, and we're going to find the bottom two are the search functions inside of Zapier. The first one is the one that we're going to test right now, the find many records with line item support. Now, I do want to point out, though, that this allows you to only find up to 100 records. So if you're working with a very large data set, this will be insufficient. Understanding the limitations of this automation action is going to be step one for you. So assuming that you have 100 or fewer records, as in our example, this is going to work perfectly. So let's make this selection here. And now we have to sync up with our Airtable account. You can see I've got quite a few different Airtable accounts. I'll just go ahead and make a connection and move on to the next step. If you haven't already connected to Airtable, just go through Zapier's steps on that last page. It'll walk you through connecting Zapier to Airtable. Now we choose our database, and ours is called Find Records in Airtable. Now you're going to see a list of all of the different databases that you've given Zapier permission to see. Just make sure you choose the proper database here. Now we have two tables. We have the Find Multiple and the Find Single tables. In this first example, we're finding multiple. And now we're choosing our search by field. So in our example, let's flip back to Airtable. We just want to look up information that lives in the phase two category. So when we perform this function, we are going to expect to find records four through 11 because they're all in phase two. So that field again was called category. So that's our search by field. And you can see that we've only got the two different fields in our database in our sample data. And now we have to say what the search value is. Now, in our case, it's a single select field, which is kind of treated like text or a string by Zapier. And so we're just going to type this out, phase space II, capital II, because I was using Roman numerals. So phase two. Now, it's important that you get this verbatim. It is case sensitive. If it is not exact, then you won't find anything. Now, we're going to say that we are uh, looking for an exact match. If we check off no, then Zapier might uh, you know, find things that are in similar fields. Well, in our case, we've got phase one, two, and three. They're all very similar. I definitely want to make sure I'm looking for the exact match and not bringing back other stuff. Now, this search formula is optional, and I'm going to show you how it works in the latter part of this video. So we're going to skip it for now. We don't need to use this because we have mapped to the field and search value. But just know that for now, we could alternatively look for a search formula. We can also limit it to a view if we so choose. In our example, we're not going to do that. We will look at all of the views that we have. And if we have files or attachments in our database, we could also opt to include the file contents. That is not an issue here. Now, this is where we get to determine how many records we're willing to bring back. Please do remember that 100 is the limit. Now, lastly, we can say, what are we going to do if we don't find anything when we do our search? So if there are no records that match phase two in the category, then we can choose to either say, hey, we just want to stop this. So we could simply say, uh, mark this successful and run the steps that use the search result. Or we could say, mark safely halted and skip steps that use the search result. So essentially just saying, hey, we uh, didn't find anything. This is over. Or alternatively, we can check this box and create a new record that does match those conditions. So do know that this is an option for you as well. And it's all built into the same search function. Now, for our example, we know that we've got a number of different categories that are in phase two. So let's go ahead and continue, and we're going to test the step. And the results are going to show us all of the different records that Zapier has found. You can see that it's found record one that has the name of four that is in phase two. Now, we can scroll all the way down. What we're going to notice is that it's not finding the records in any particular order. So here it found record four, record five, then record 11, then record seven, then record 10. So it's kind of jumping all over the place. It has, though, found all of the records in phase two, ranging from four right here all the way to 11. Let's flip back to Airtable to verify this. And that is what we expected it to do. So now what can we do with this? Well, we found the eight different records within that span. And so now we can do some looping function if we so choose. So we might say we want to send one email that includes all eight of these records in a report. Or alternatively, we could say we want to actually do some looping function. Note the looping option right here. And we want to update each of the records that we found in the last step. 
So these are the types of things that you could do after you find a number of different records. Now, the sky's really the limit, whatever you can imagine. You know, if Zapier is capable of doing it, go ahead and give it a shot and build that automation. But these are the common use cases that we see, kind of reporting on mass for finding a bunch of data or performing a looping function to update that data one by one by one. Okay, so that is finding multiple records. That was what we did in this step, but that's not the only way to find stuff. Sometimes you'll find an individual record. And this, quite frankly, is far more common inside of Zapier. So again, we're gonna look for Airtable here in part two, and we're gonna come down to our action events, and we're looking for finding a single record. So we're gonna make this selection here, and again, make sure it's connected to your proper Airtable account and continue. In your configuration, make sure you've mapped it to the proper base. And in our case, we have another table here for finding a single record. Let's make that selection. But before we move on, we're going to pop back to Airtable. We're going to take a look at what we have in our second table. So a couple things that I've put out for us. Number one is this field right here called record ID. This is a formula field that we're using, and we're using this formula record underscore ID, open close parentheses. If you're new to Airtable, you might not know, but every single record in Airtable, when it's created, automatically starts with its own unique record ID. Now, record IDs are very valuable to you when you're building automation because when you update a record, if you know its record ID, you are 100% certain that you are not updating the wrong thing. So if you know a record ID, this is really, really helpful. And I highly recommend that in most of your Airtable tables, you include the record ID field. Now Zapier is gonna know what the different record IDs are already, but you won't. As a, a lay person who's building an Airtable, you won't know what those record IDs are unless you're displaying them somehow. So let's imagine that maybe in a former step in our automation, we had this record ID given to us. I'm just gonna copy this one right here, just uh, Control C or Apple C. I'm gonna flip into Zapier, and let's imagine that we already knew the record ID. Well, it's really simple to find a record if you know its ID, right? So all we have to do is say search by field, and in this case, we're gonna use the record ID field that we built, and we're gonna drop in or paste the search value. Now, it might not always be that you have the search value copied. So instead, what you would do is bring that information in from a previous step in your automation, and you could drop in the record ID. But in our case, because we're just using an example, we're going to paste it in. Now, let's suppose this is all we were looking for. Uh, we're going to continue here and test the step, and we are going to find the record here that is in stage one named record two. Flipping back into Airtable, that's the one I just copied right here. It's in stage one, record two, that's the record ID. This is always unique and the best way for you to find records inside of Airtable, provided that you already know the ID. What if you don't? Well, we can perform a different kind of search as well. We could say, well, we could look at a stage or we could look for the size, but what if we want to build a scenario where we're saying multiple things are true at the same time? So let's say, for example, we want to find the record that is in stage one and it has size medium. How do we do that? Well, the first thing I recommend you to do is start with an Airtable formula. We're just going to write a test formula here, and I'm naming the field formula, and we're selecting the formula field type. And what I'm going to say here is actually a combination of two things. I'm going to say, if both conditions are true, then this thing will be true, right? So if two things are true, and so note that inside here, I have an if function, and let me actually do this a little more properly with some better uh, formatting here. I'm saying if these two things are both true that I have yet to write, then we're gonna drop down here and say uh, true, and then lastly, false. So now it's time to go inside of our and condition and put out the two conditions that we're looking for. In our example, I said we're looking for a record where the stage, so let's bring up stage here, is equal to stage one, and the size is equal to medium. So let's break this down kind of one step at a time. I know that I'm very familiar with functions. I write them a lot. If you're a little new to the Airtable syntax or Airtable formulas, this might be a bit daunting. So let's break it down. If these two things are true, 
like, and both of these things are simultaneously true. Stage is stage one, size is medium. If both of those things are true, then this function will be true. And if both of these things are not true, then this function will be false. Let's create this field and see what it does. And just like that, you can see that in the instance where stage is one and size is medium, we have one, which is saying, yes, true. And in the other cases, we have zero, which is false. Now, the reason that I've written this formula in Airtable is it's much easier for us to test the function in Airtable to make sure it's working accordingly before we try to bring it into Zapier. Now I have a proper function or formula in Airtable. Let's copy it. I'm going to copy this whole thing and flip back now into Zapier. So in my find record function, I'm going back to the configure here, and I'm not going to look by the record ID. I'm actually going to clear this out and clear out my search value. Instead, I'm going to use that search formula. And here, I'm going to drop in my function. Now, the difference here is that Zapier is not looking for the name of the field. It wants the field ID. And the only way we can access that is by bringing it in here in our function. Now, we don't actually know the field ID inside of Airtable right here at this stage. I'll show you where to get it, though. Let's flip back into Airtable now, and we're going to go over to Tools in the upper right corner, and I'm going to go to the Manage Fields. This is opening up those fields, and you can see that just as records all have their own ID, so too do fields have a field ID. So here I'm going to look for the size. This is my size field ID. And rather than say size here, I'm just going to paste in the field ID. I'm going to flip back into Airtable again and bring back the field ID for stage and do the same thing here. I don't want to have the name, the text of the field. It's much better if I'm using the field ID. So from here, I can run a test and let's retest the step. And of course, we know that there is only one instance where the size is medium and the stage is one, and that is record two. Just like that, we were able to find this with a function. So this proves that you don't have to be tech savvy in order to put these different components together in your next Zapier slash Airtable automation. Here we've been able to find multiple records or just find single records, either based on one condition or several conditions at once. I hope you got a ton of value from this video. And of course, if you did, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you need a little more help, feel free to swing by our website. But of course, most importantly, keep on building.